Lass uns mit einem Gebet anfangen. Dear Father in heaven. Liebe Vater im Himmel, uh, I want to thank you for ich will dir danken für diesen neuen Morgen and for, for the worship. und für die Andacht. Und ich möchte dich bitten, dass du uns hilfst, aufmerksam zu sein, to, to see the points. dass wir die Punkte sehen können und dass unser Verstand in der Wahrheit gegründet wird. That we Have our minds as a mighty fortress. dass unser Verstand wie eine mächtige Festung sein kann. And I want to you that you bless Brother Mark. Und ich möchte bitten, dass du Bruder Mark segnest. Hilf ihm auch, dass er durch deinen Heiligen Geist geführt wird und klar ist in dem, was er sagt. Help all of us to Hilf uns allen, dass wir uns an die vergangenen Punkte erinnern, dass wir auf die neuen sehen können. Und segne auch die Leute, die über den Livestream zuschauen und versuchen, die Wahrheit zu verstehen. In Jesu Namen. Amen. Amen. Turn in your Bibles to John um, 17. In verse 3. In verse 3. <coughs> It says, in, This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Okay, so what does this verse mean? Was bedeutet dieser Vers? How, how do we know God? Wie können wir Gott kennen? Wenn er sich offenbart durch sein Wort. Wort how does he reveal himself? That's the question. Aber die Frage ist, wie offenbart er sich? I mean, through his word, but in, in, what, in what way? Also durch sein Wort, aber auf welche Weise? No, you have to understand the spiritual things of the Lord. Okay, yes, go, go, to, um, go to Matthew 13. Also, dass wir die geistlichen Dinge des Wortes verstehen, gehen wir zu Matthäus 13. You can't understand the secret things unless you understand this point. Du kannst die geheimen Dinge nicht verstehen, es sei denn, dass du diesen Punkt verstehst. Vers 34. Vers 34. All these things speak Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable speak he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation Of the world. So now I'll ask the question, how do we know God? Also jetzt frage ich noch mal die Frage, wie können wir Gott kennen? No. Durch die Gleichnisse? No, no, not through the parables. Bec the fact that he speaks parables to us, right? Also das ist die Tatsache, er spricht die Gleichnisse zu uns. Okay, because it tells us right here, right? So just go, go to Psalm 78. Geht zu um, Psalm 79. Oh, Psalm 78. This is where he was quoting it from, right? Daher hat er das zitiert. It says, verse 1. Vers 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. So what are they to hear? Was sollen sie hören? The law, right? Das Gesetz. And we read in John 17, 3, this 
this life eternal, that we might know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Right? Wir haben in Johannes 17, Vers 3 gelesen, das ist das ewige Leben, dass sie dich kennen und Jesus Christus, den du gesandt hast. What does it mean to know God? Was bedeutet es, Gott zu kennen? It tells us in 1 John 3, right, in Vers 4, or 1 John 2 in Vers 4, I think it is, it says, um, He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Es sagt uns in 1. Johannes 2, Vers 4, dass derjenige, der sagt, dass er ihn kennt, aber nicht seine Gebote hält, der ist ein Lügner und die Wahrheit ist nicht in ihm. So to know God is to keep his commandments, right? Also Gott zu kennen bedeutet seine Gebote zu halten. And here it says, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. So how is it that we learn his law? Wie können wir sein Gesetz lernen? Through the parables, right? Durch die Gleichnisse. So you can't know God unless you understand that he teaches us through parables, right? Also du kannst Gott nicht kennen, es sei denn, dass du verstehst, dass er uns durch Gleichnisse lernt. Okay, for instance, right? Go to, go to Judges chapter 14. Gehen wir zum Beispiel zu Richter 14. And go to verse 12. In Judges 14 is speaking about, about Samson. Und Richter 14 spricht über Simson. Who is Samson? Wer ist Simson? Sorry? Nazareth. Nazareth. That might be That's not what I'm asking. I'm not asking who he is literally. Who does he represent? Also nicht wer um, buchstäblich ist, sondern wen er darstellt. Yeah, he's, he represents Christ, right? Er stellt Christus da. And as Margaret said, he's a Nazarite, Jesus of Nazareth, right? Er ist ein Nazirea, Jesus von Nazareth. Okay, in verse 12, what does it say? Was sagt es in Vers 12? And Samson said unto them, I will, I will now put forth a riddle unto you, if ye can certainly declare it me within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty sheets uh, and thirty change of garments. But if he cannot declare it me, then ye shall give me thirty sheets and thirty change of garments. And they said unto him, Put forth thy riddle that we may hear it. So how was Samson speaking to them? Wie hat Simson zu ihnen gesprochen? In a parable, right? Because it says in Ezekiel 17 that put forth a riddle, put forth a parable. It's the same thing, right? In Ezekiel 17 sagt er, er hat ein, ein Rätsel gesprochen oder ein Gleichnis, das ist dasselbe. Okay, and God is represented through these, through these, uh, this Godhead, right? Und Gott wird durch diese Gottheit dargestellt. So in the Old, the Old Testament was the time of the Father. Und die, das Alte Testament war die Zeit des Vaters. Okay, how was the Father represented, or how did the Father speak to us in the Old Testament? Wie hat der Vater zu uns gesprochen im Alten Testament? Through the word, right? Das Wort. Okay. Right? And then when and you come to the New Testament, he speaks to us directly, or the, the, the time period of the Son, he, he's speaking now to us directly, right? Wenn man zum Neuen Testament kommt, das ist die Zeitspanne des Sohnes, und er spricht jetzt zu uns direkt. So, what should have been the greatest evidence that this was his Son? Was hätte der größte Beweis sein sollen, dass dieser sein Sohn war? That he spoke in parables, right? Er Gleichnissen gesprochen hat. Okay, and the third part of the Godhead is the Holy Spirit, right? Der dritte Teil der Gottheit ist der Heilige Geist. And when, when that Holy Spirit is poured out, we are now in that dispensation, right? Und wenn der Heilige Geist ausgegossen wird, sind wir in dieser Zeitspanne. Okay, and technically, Pentecost was prefiguring that dispensation, Und right? Technisch gesprochen hat um, Pfingsten dieses Zeitalter vorausgeschattet. Okay, and that will repeat, right? Und das wird sich wiederholen. So, when the Holy Spirit comes, it says, he will guide you into all truth. Es sagt, wenn der Heilige Geist kommt, wird er uns in alle Wahrheit führen. So, what will the Holy Spirit 
teach you to understand. Was wird also der Heilige Geist dich lernen zu verstehen? All the power, the secret things, right? Alle Ge äh, Gleichnisse, die Geheimnisse. Okay, so what is the Lord opening up to us right now? Was öffnet uns der Herr gerade jetzt? The parables, right? Gleichnisse. So you can be sure, right, that God is leading us in the sense that he is opening us to the secret things and leading us down to the conclusion of all those parables, right? Ihr könnt euch sicher sein, dass Gott uns führt und äh, weil er uns eben diese Gleichnisse ähm, offenbart oder die Geheimnisse und das führt uns dann zu der Sch äh, Schlussfolgerung oder zum Höhepunkt von all okay. diesen Dingen. Satan counterfeits that, right? Satan fälscht das. During the Old Testament you had heathenism, right? Während des Alten Testaments da war das Heidentum. The dragon, the father. Der Drache, der Vater. Right? And then was followed by papalism, his son. Dann right? war es gefolgt vom Papsttum, das war sein Sohn. And the lastly, this false prophet is going to bring this false spirit down, right? So let's wird dann der ähm, falsche Heilige Geist, also der falsche Prophet den falschen Heiligen Geist runterbringen. Right? Okay, so we can see, right, that, but the the false Holy Spirit is going to lead them to understand things literally and not spiritually, right? Wir werden sehen, dass der falsche Heilige Geist sie dazu führen wird, Dinge buchstäblich zu verstehen und nicht geistlich. Okay, so um, Matthew 24 is a parable. Matthäus 24 ist ein Gleichnis. Right, and it's It's the first time Christ he doesn't use he doesn't use symbolic language uh, in this parable, right? Und Christus benutzt in diesem Gleichnis keine symbolische oh, Sprache. I mean that's not entirely true, but what I'm saying is he uses things like um, it's, he's using events that are coming, right? And he wants them to bring them in conjunction with all the Parables, right? Also das ist nicht ganz wahr, aber er, er benutzt ähm, also Ereignisse, die kommen werden und ähm, er möchte, dass sie das in Verbindung mit all den Gleichnissen verstehen. You understand what I mean? Versteht ihr, was ich meine? Matthew 24 is a parable, right? But he's speaking, he's not speaking in the language like seed and, and plants and, I mean he does, he says, when you should see the fig tree, right, for instance, right? Also in Matthäus 24 benutzt er jetzt nicht nur ähm, diese Sprache über Samen und Pflanzen. Also zum Beispiel spricht er da ähm, schon über den Feigenbaum. No, not for example. I'm saying he, he does. He, he does when he says it. But, but what I'm saying, he uses, he's using events in that, right? He, and he wants us to, to understand these events in relation to all the parables. Also er macht es schon, ähm, zum Beispiel... Er macht das schon durch den Feigenbaum, aber er benutzt eigentlich Ereignisse, um uns zu verstehen, zu geben, ähm, ja, diese Gleichnisse verstehen zu geben. Okay, for, for instance, right? Um, Matthew, Matthew 24, right? Deals with, in Matthew 24, verse 15. So gehen wir zum Beispiel zu Matthäus 24, Vers 15. Right? It's dealing with the papacy. Da handelt es über das Papst. But Luke 21 and verse 20 is dealing with pagan rule. Aber Lukas 21, Vers 20 handelt über das Heidnische. But they're, they're both teaching the exact same truth. Aber right? beides lehrt genau dieselbe Wahrheit. They're both teaching the same time period at the end of the world. Beides right? lehrt dieselbe Zeitspanne am Ende der Welt. Right? And Luke 21, 20 it talks about how Cestis comes, but it's leading you down to when... Titus is going to come and destroy Jerusalem. Lukas 21, Vers 20 spricht darüber, wenn Cestius kommt, aber es führt dich dann hinunter, wenn Titus kommen wird, um Jerusalem zu zerstören. So why does, why does he parallel that with the 1260? Und warum setzt er das mit der 1260 parallel? Because they are to be brought together line upon line, right? Sie sollen Linie auf Linie zusammengebracht werden. Right, and when you go to 2 Thessalonians, und wenn wir zu 2. Thessalonicher gehen, Kapitel 2. 
in verse 1. In verse 1. This is in relation to what we were talking about yesterday. Das ist jetzt in Bezug darüber, was wir gestern äh, gelesen haben. Verse 1. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. What's he telling them right there in verse 2? Was sagt er ihnen dort in Vers 2? I don't know that he's saying that. Just, just read, read what it's saying. What, what was it that... What, okay. Hold your place there. Go back to Luke uh, 21. And verse 8. Vers 8. And he says, Take heed that ye be not deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and the time draweth near. What do they say? Was sagen sie? I am Christ. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That's all they said, I am Christ? Is this all that they said, I am Christ? Yeah, the time draweth near, right? That's the point, right? Zeit ist neu. Go back to 2 Thessalonians. Gehen wir jetzt zurück zu 2. Thessalonicher. Paul is in the, the time of pagan Rome, right? Paulus ist in der Zeit von heidnischen Rom. And he's, he's telling them, right? Und er sagt ihnen, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, nor be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by the word, nor by letter as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. So what are some people saying? Also, was sagen einige Leute? Right, they're, they're saying that um, the time draweth near, right? Sie sagen, die Zeit, um, also ist nah. But we, we looked at this yesterday, that the, what had to, to uh, the Great Tribulation was the time of paganism and Papalism, right? Gestern haben wir gelesen, dass die Zeit der großen Trübsal die Zeit von Heidentum und Papsttum war. And he says here, verse three, und in Vers 3 sagte, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. So what's he saying now? Was sagt er jetzt? No, no, he didn't say that. He says, let no man deceive you. Right? Euch von verführen. Okay, the point is, he's repeating the words of Christ, right? Der Punkt ist, er, äh, die Worte Does these men rise up saying that the day is at hand and he's saying, don't be deceived on this point. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that he is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay, let's see who's attentive and thinking about Bible principles and how we study the Bible. Right? Ähm, gemäß den biblischen ähm, Prinzipien studieren. Okay, so we read Matthew 24, verse 15 and we read Luke 21, 20, right? Wir haben Matthäus 24, Vers 15 und Lukas 21, Vers 20 gelesen. What is Paul uh, doing here? Was macht Paulus hier? Okay, right, that's right. What, what, explain the point. Er bringt Heidentum und Papsttum zusammen. Oh, the time of paganism is quite forward, the, the, the day of the Lord is not going to come before. Well, that's not combining them. He is combining them, but, you, but you're not combining them. You're, you're saying he's in the time of paganism, he's pointing forward to papalism. That's not combining them. I'm asking you, what? how does the thought of Luke 21 and Matthew 24 combine them. 
wie ähm, verbindet der Gedanke how is it being illustrated here? von Matthäus 24 und Lukas 21, wie verbindet sich das und wie wird das hier dargestellt? Okay, but you, you, you know, think Math Luke 21 is dealing with Cestius. Okay, you're saying yes, Margaret, but you're not getting the point. Cestius to Titus. What happens with Titus? Also, Lukas 21 handelt über Cestius bis Titus. Was geschieht bei Titus? Okay, they're going to destroy Jerusalem, right? Jerusalem zerstören. And Titus is at which point prophetically? Und Titus ist an welchem Punkt prophetisch? How many years from Cestius to Titus? Wie viele Jahre von Cestius bis Titus? Three and a half years, right? Three and a half years. Okay. Okay, so in, in, in Matthew 24, right, it's talking about the, the, the papacy from, from the 1260, from the beginning to the end, right? Matthäus 24 spricht über das Papst und von Anfang bis Ende. So the papacy right is Matthew 24 but the uh, Luke 21 is speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem Matthäus 24 spricht über das Papsttum aber ähm, Lukas 21 über die Zerstörung von Jerusalem Where is the Pope sitting here in verse 4 Und wo sitzt der Papst hier in Vers 4 Right so how how are they being combined together in Jerusalem Und deswegen wie wird das zusammen verbunden Oh, okay, in that sentence, what does that have to do with the papacy? That's what I'm asking. How is the how is the papacy and paganism being combined together in verse 4? In, in, in the sense of the destruction of Jerusalem. Look, in, in verse 4, right, it says, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, the papacy, the Pope, as God, sitteth in what? Okay, so the, the papacy, right, the, the Pope has to come into to Jerusalem, right? Okay. So the, the Pope is one dispensation, Titus is another dispensation, but this verse right here combines them both together, right? Papst is ein Zeitalter und das Heidentum ein anderes Zeitalter, aber dieser Vers verbindet das jetzt hier zusammen. How did Paul know that? Woher wusste Paulus? Papacy didn't even exist. Das Papstum hat ja noch nicht mal existiert. Right? And unless Paul understood line upon line, right, and understood uh, the prophecies correctly, right? How, how did Paul know that? Because the Holy Spirit revealed it to him, right? So the Holy Spirit was revealing him to him things, all these parables, line upon line, right? Right? I mean, the Pope has got nothing to do with, uh, with Jerusalem. And remember, because it says, that day shall not come. Speaking about the very point that they're asking him in Matthew 24. Right? Der Papst hat eben nichts mit Jerusalem zu tun. Aber ähm, denkt daran, dass ähm, ähm, dieser Tag... Äh, wird nicht kommen, also das ist derselbe Punkt, wo sie ihn auch fragen in Matthäus 24. Okay, and we read the quote, I think in one of the earlier presentations on this, that the Jews associated his second coming with the destruction of Jerusalem. Und right. ähm, denkt daran in einem, einem Zitat, was wir mal früher in früheren Studien gelesen haben, da stand, dass die äh, Jünger haben den Tag des Herrn mit der Zerstörung von Jerusalem verbunden. Right. Associate. Okay. So, and when you go back uh, to Luke, you know, fact, go back to Matthew 24. Gehen wir zurück zu Matthäus 24.
in verse 23. It says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And Sister White uses this to speak about this last deception, right? benutzt das, um über die letzte Täuschung zu sprechen. Where, uh, yes, just one point Yes, uh, the last deception where Antichrist will appear claiming himself to be Christ. Ich spreche right? über die letzte Täuschung, wo Antichristus erscheinen wird und behaupten wird, Christus zu sein. Okay, so... You can't understand, you couldn't understand 2 Thessalonians, right, unless you're understanding Matthew and Luke and combining those two histories together. Right? Uh, uh, we follow it. This is how we're linking the Pope with Jerusalem, when Christ comes and destroys him, right? So verbinden wir eben den Papst mit Jerusalem, dass es, wenn Christus kommt und ihn zerstört. Matthew 24, verse 15. Matthäus 24, Vers 15. When he therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, which is the papacy, mm -hmm. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, that would be this temple that he sits in, right? If you go, if you just on that thought, I, I, I thought about that. If you go to Mark 13. Also, gehen wir mit diesem Gedanken noch zu Markus 13. Vers 14 is the same point that you're making. Vers 14, das ist derselbe Punkt, den du uns gemacht hast. But you, uh, when you're talking about, you're, you're applying it at the end, right? I mean, that's the end of the Verse 14. But when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, right? Where he ought not is in, in Jerusalem, right? Where it ought not is in Jerusalem. But, you know, if you go back in history, it was speaking about when the, the Romans planted their standard within the confines of the holy ground which was around, around Jerusalem, right? So it's, it's, but it's teaching the same thing. In the Geschichte schaut, dann war es, hat es darüber gesprochen, wo die Römer dann sich aufgestellt haben in diesem Bereich um Jerusalem, also es war der heilige Boden. Aber es lehrt dich dasselbe. But I would agree that when you see him, because if you go back to 2 Thessalonians, also gehen wir nochmal zurück zu 2. Thessalonicher, In verse 4, Vers chapter 4. 2, verse 4. Kapitel 2, Vers 4. It says, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. And this is the point that uh, Paul is making. He's taken that from Matthew 24, Luke Mark 13, and uh, Luke 21, and making the same assessment. Right? Also, um, das ist eben, was Paulus hier nimmt. Er nimmt das von um, Markus 13, Matthäus 24 und Lukas 21. Und er macht hier uh, ja, die, um, dieselbe Aussage. So he understands that Jerusalem is a symbol of his people. Right? Er versteht, dass Jerusalem ein Symbol ist für sein Volk. Okay, and it says, it says, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not, that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. What's already working? Das wirkt schon. The mystery, right? Das Geheimnis. And the parables is the mystery, right? Gleichnisse sind die Geheimnisse. Right? So the, the mystery of godliness is the thing that's going to save you from the mystery of iniquity. Das Geheimnis der Gottseligkeit ist das, was dich retten wird vor dem Geheimnis der Bosheit. Right? 
If you don't know the mystery of godliness, if you don't receive that revelation, you're going to be taken by this woman. Wenn du das Geheimnis der Gottseligkeit nicht ähm, kennst, also nicht die Offenbarung erhältst, wirst du von dieser Frau ähm, eingenommen werden. Okay, it says, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And his coming is marked there, as the destruction of Jerusalem, right? Sein Kommen wird hier markiert als die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. By Titus. Durch Titus. Right? Okay. So, it's combining these two things together, right? Also, es um, verbindet diese zwei Dinge miteinander. So, in, in Luke, right? In, in, in 2 Thessalonians here, it's marking, sorry, in, in Luke, excuse me, it's marking the point when Titus will come and destroy Jerusalem. Also in Lukas markiert es den Punkt, wenn Titus kommen wird, um Jerusalem zu zerstören. False king of the north, right? Der falsche König des Nordens. Okay, but uh, Matthew 24 is marking the point when Christ shall punish the false king of the north. Na, Matthäus 24 spricht über den Punkt, wenn Christus kommen wird und den falschen König des Nordens bestrafen wird. And that's what's happening here in 2 Thessalonians. Und das geschieht hier in 2. Thessalonicher. Christ comes and punishes him for putting himself in that temple that he's just conquered. Right? Christus ähm, kommt und bestraft ihn, dass er sich in diesen Tempel gesetzt hat, den er gerade erobert hat. Right? You can only see these things line upon line. Du kannst diese Dinge nur Linie auf Linie sehen. Okay. And now, just go to, um, if we go to Zechariah, chapter 3. Gehen wir zu Zechariah 3. I just want to make a point also on something we looked at yesterday. Ich möchte ich noch einen Punkt über etwas machen, was wir uns gestern angeschaut haben. Um, in Zechariah, chapter 3, it's the... Day of Atonement, right? Zachariah 3 spricht über den Versöhnungs. The High Priest in the Most Holy Place. Der hohe Priester im Allerheiligsten. And his sins, right, are just about to be blotted out, right? Seine Sünden stehen kurz davor ausgetickt zu werden. Repent ye, be converted, that your sins may be blotted out in the when the times of refreshing shall come, Sister White says, in the day of atonement, right? Also, um, tut Buße, bekehrt euch, dass eure Sünden ausgetickt werden, wenn die Zeiten der Erfrischung kommen. Und ein Weiß sagt, das ist im Versöhnungstag. Okay, and if we go, um, okay, go to verse 2. Gehen wir zu Vers 2. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? What's this talking about, David? Über was spricht das? Yeah, the fiery furnace. So what about it? Den Feuerofen, was ist damit? What did we discuss yesterday? The, the, the end is the time where it's cut short, right? Also, das Ende ist die Zeit, wenn es verkürzt wird. And he delivers you from the fiery furnace, Und right? Und er befreit dich aus dem Feuerofen. So if you want, I want an evidence to show that the deliverance from the fiery furnace is when he delivers you in the day of atonement is when he blots out your sin, also right? Also wenn er Beweis braucht, dass um, die Zeit, wo er dich befreit aus dem Feuerofen um, am Versöhnungstag ist, um, dann when he blots out your sins. Ah, right? You see that? Okay, and we discussed the point yesterday. If you just go to Romans uh, chapter 9. Um, and verse, let's begin verse 26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. How, who shall be saved? Wer wird gerettet werden? A remnant, right? Überrest. For he will finish the work 
and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. So when he saves you, right there, it's marking a point where he cuts it short in righteousness, right? So when he dich dort rettet, then it's also when he verkürzt in gerechtigkeit. So when he plucks you out of the burning fiery furnace, das right? Wenn er dich aus dem brennenden Feuerofen herausreißt. Right? We all see this point. Können wir all diesen Punkt sehen? Okay, and that's where we were finishing on that thought yesterday, right? Mit diesem Gedanken hatten wir gestern aufgehört. Okay, so go to the, the notes now. Geht jetzt zu den Notizen. And uh, Matthew 24, verse 23, we just read these a minute ago. Matthäus 24, verse 23, das hatten wir vorhin gelesen. So, it says, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there believe it not, for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, where did Sister White, um, in fact, just let's read the next quote, and we'll remind ourselves on this point. Right? Lesen wir das nächste Zitat, dann erinnern wir uns an diesen Punkt. He declared... There shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. What's she doing? Was macht sie? Yes, just go to, turn, on your, turn back to Matthew 24. Also geht in eurer Bibel zu Matthäus 24. Sie verbindet die erste Hälfte mit der zweiten. Right, verse 9. Verse 9. Verse 9 is the end, right? Verse 9 is das end. This is what he, he, he's pointing them to this, this beginning here, just to show that this is what's going to happen just before I come, right? Also, er, er weist sich hier auf diesen Anfang, um nur zu zeigen, was passieren wird, kurz bevor er kommt. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and deceive many. So she's paralleling this with uh, um, verse 23 and 24. Right? Sie setzt, uh, das hier mit Vers 23 und 24. right? Again, showing you that it's at the same point, right? Zeigt dir wieder, dass es am selben Punkt ist. It's all bringing you down to this little box at the end, this final test, right? Führt dich hin zu dieser letzten kleinen Box, dieser finale Test. Whether it be this one or this one, the principles are the same, right? Ob das jetzt die hier oder die hier ist, die Prinzipien sind dieselben. Okay, so, but the point I want to make is Matthew 24 is pointing you down to this, this end. Right. Punkt, den ich machen will, Matthäus 24, weist dich auf das Ende. Sister White takes the principles of that, of the seventh plague, and applies it here, because that's where they get delivered. Right? Herr White nimmt die Prinzipien davon und ähm, setzt es an der siebten Plage hier hin, weil dort werden sie befreit. Okay, so, go to Matthew 24. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 24. In verse 25. Vers 25. It says, Behold, I have told you before, wherefore... If they shall say unto you, who's they? Wer sind sie? The false prophets that rise up, right? Die falschen Propheten, die aufstehen. If they shall say unto you, behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. Okay, what's the secret chambers? Was sind die geheimen Kammern? Yes, your, your heart, Dein right? Herz. So, what are they claiming? Was behaupten sie? Yeah, they are claiming the mystery of godliness, right? Sie sagen, Christus ist ihnen. Also, sie behaupten, dass sie das Geheimnis der Gottseligkeit haben. Right? Richtig. 
Okay, but what really is it? Aber was ist das in Wirklichkeit? It's the mystery of iniquity, ist right? Das Geheimnis der Bosheit. It's Second Thessalonians, es right? Ist das, es ist Thessalonicher. Because who's in their temple? Weil wer ist in ihrem Tempel? Right. It's the man of sin in their heart, right? Der Mensch der Sünde in ihren Herzen. And it's revealed, right? Es wird offenbart. Okay, the, 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 the Pope going into the literal temple is just an illustration of the man of sin being revealed in the heart, right? Der Papst, der in dem buchstäblichen Tempel geht, ist nur eine externe Darstellung von dem Mensch der Sünde, der in, im eigenen Herzen offenbart wird. So, when these false prophets rise up here internally and see they are holy, you know, But it's this time you've got to flee, right? Also, when these false prophets here aufstehen and um, sagen, sie sind heilig, and then weißt du, dass es die Zeit ist, dass du fliehen musst. Right? Oh, everybody get that point? Can jeder den Punkt sehen? Everybody get that point? <coughs> yes. So it's it's marking this point. You can now see prophetically that, that this is a fulfillment of Second Thessalonians, and you need to flee, right? Markiert dann diesen Punkt, wo du dann sehen kannst, dass das eine Erfüllung, also eine prophetische Erfüllung von 2. Thessalonicher ist und dann musst du fliehen. Okay, it's talking about fleeing to, to Christ, right? Das bedeutet, dass man zu Christus fliehen soll. Okay, so, because in verse 27, Bei den Vers 27, it says, For as lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So he's telling you how the, the how Christ will, will come, right? Sag dir, wie Christus kommen wird. And Christ will not will not um, you know, until his little second coming, he will not um, touch the earth, let's say, say this much, right? Bis zu seinem in fact, even in the second coming, he won't touch the earth. Also selbst bei der Wiederkunft wird er nicht die Erde berühren. Okay, so when they make this point, right, you, you know that it's a lie. Wenn sie diesen Punkt machen, dann weiß man, dass das eine Lüge ist. Because it will be illustrated by this man of sin standing in the temple. Weil das right? wird dargestellt werden durch diesen Mensch der Sünde, der im Tempel sitzt. Th that's the sign for you, the external sign, right? Das ist das externe Zeichen. Internally, at the same time, these false prophets will rise up and claim that they're righteous, that they're holy, etc., etc. Intern werden diese falschen Propheten aufstehen, sie werden behaupten, dass sie gerecht sind, heilig sind und so weiter. Wouldn't be surprised if somebody claims that they've had a dream from Christ, etc. Und ich wäre dann nicht überrascht, wenn jemand behaupten wird, dass er einen Traum von Christus erhalten hat. Right, because in Joel, what does it say? Weil was sagt es in Joel? Yes, there will be dreams and visions, right? Also, wird den Geist ausgießen, dort wird es Träume und Visionen geben. Okay, so, okay, so go to Matthew 24, verse 29. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 24 und Vers 29. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days. So this is the point where he cuts it short, right? Das ist right? der Punkt, wenn er es verkürzt. Right? Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Is this in agreement with the book of Luke? Is this in übereinstimmung with the book of Lucas? Come on guys, you yes. tell me, right? Okay, Marius, go and show me where it's in agreement. Yeah. No, okay, yeah, go, go, go to the point. Go, turn and look to Luke. Also gehen wir zu Lukas. Vers 10 also. Lukas 21, Vers 10. Okay, read, read 10 to uh, 13, Marius. 10 bis 13. Nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. So what is that? Das ist das. The shaking of the heavens. Heavens and air, right? The shaking of the heavens and the earth. Okay. But before all this. So but before the shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? Before the shaking of the heavens and the earth. They shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, deliver you up. 
to the synagogues and into prisons and brought four kings before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for testimony. Right, okay, so there's the point. This is where these false prophets are going to rise up, right? Yes. Because when you go back to Matthew 24, in verse 9, it's the same point, right? Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And verse 11, and many false prophets shall arise and deceive many, right? So it's showing us that this point, just, just before Christ comes, Right? This is going to happen. This is the, the main sign that you're to see, right? This zeigt uns kurz bevor Christus kommt, um, dass es dann was passiert. Das ist das Hauptzeichen, was du sehen sollst. Okay, so you're, you're not to be deceived when they say, right, at the beginning here, the time is nigh at hand, right? Das heißt, dass sie nicht verführt werden, wenn sie hier am Anfang sagen, die Zeit ist nahe. Okay, these things must first come to pass. Diese right? Dinge müssen zuerst geschehen. The sign you're looking for is when they surround Jerusalem, rise up and claim to be holy and claim it to have Christ in them, right? Also das Zeichen, was du sehen sollst, ist, wenn sie Jerusalem umlagern und wenn sie ihm sagen, dass sie behaupten, sie sind heilig und Christus in sich haben. And you have to recognize God's voice, right? Du musst Gottes Stimme erkennen. How will you know God's voice? Wie wirst du Gottes Stimme erkennen? For instance, right? Just go to go to Genesis 22. Geht zum Beispiel zu 1. Mose 22. Vers 1. Vers 1. It says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he says, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Where was he to offer him? Wo sollte er ihn opfern? On a mountain. Auf einem Berg. Right. Okay, so how did Abraham know that this was God speaking to him? Woher wusste Abraham, dass das Gott war, der zu ihm sprach? It was an agreement with all the types. Yes, it's an agreement with all the types, right? Eine Übereinstimmung mit all den Typen. All the parables, right? Die gleichen. That's how he knew that it was God's voice. Daher wusste er, dass das Gottes Stimme war. Because it says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, there's no light in them. Right? Weil es sagt zum Gesetz und zum Zeugnis, wenn sie nicht gemäß diesem Wort sprechen, dann weißt du, dass kein Licht in ihnen ist. It was a great test of faith, das right? Das war ein großer Glaubenstest. Faith cometh by? Glaube kommt durch? <laughs> hearing and? Durch das Hören und? Hearing by the word of God, right? Das Hören durch das Wort Gottes. So Abraham had to be thinking about all the types in his mind, bringing them all together to understand that this was the Lord speaking to him, right? Also Abraham musste in seinem Verstand über all die Typen nachdenken, um dann zu sehen, dass ähm, das Gott war, der zu ihm sprach. Right? Richtig. Just like Paul understood through the Holy Spirit how to bring these two different histories together line upon line, so right? So wie auch Paulus durch den Heiligen Geist dann verstanden hat, wie man diese verschiedenen Geschichten Linie auf Linie zusammenbringt. Okay, so go back to Matthew 24. Gehen wir zurück zu Matthäus 24. Verse 29. Vers 29. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give a light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. So go to Joel chapter 2. Gehen wir zu Joel 2. Verse 10. Vers 10. It says, The earth shall quake before them. Who's them? Wer sind sie? No, 
North. The false king of the North, right? And he's coming to do what? Er kommt, um was zu tun? Okay, so who is it? If you parallel it with Luke 21, who is it? Er kommt, um Jerusalem zu zerstören. Wenn man das mit Lukas 21 vergleicht oder parallel setzt, wer ist das? Titus, right? Titus. Okay. So, and the destruction of Jerusalem was the second coming, right? Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem war die Wiederkunft. Okay, it says, the earth, uh, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the... Oh, so what am I? Job, Job 2, excuse me. Wir lesen Joel 2, Vers 10. Vers 10. The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and the moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. What's that? Was ist das? Shaking of the heavens and the earth, right? Die Schütterung von Himmel und Erde. And it's going to take place directly after... They get delivered up, right? And they have this trying experience, right? Das wird stattfinden direkt nachdem sie ausgeliefert wurden und diese prüfende Erfahrung hatten. And in Joel chapter 1, what's the warning by the prophet for them to do? Und in Joel 1, was ist die Warnung durch den Propheten, was sollen sie tun? To, to sigh and cry for all the abominations in their heart, sie right? Sie sollen seufzen und klagen für all die Gräuel in ihrem Herzen. Okay. It says, and the Lord shall utter his voice before his army, for his camp is very great, for he is strong, that executeth his word, for the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Right? So when Titus comes, it's his army, and he executes his word. Right? When Titus comes, it's his army, and he führt das Gericht, äh, das Wort aus. Okay, Putin, right? Putin. But Putin's going to come and execute uh, his word upon Jerusalem, right? Also upon Kiev. Putin wird kommen und das Wort über Kiew, also Jerusalem, auszuführen. Okay, and back to Matthew 24, verse 30. Gehen wir zu Matthäus 24, Vers 30. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together as a light from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So these verses, I mean, I struggled with these verses for a long time. Also ich habe lange Zeit mit diesen Versen gerungen. But if you understand it this way, it's marking the point when it's cut short and he comes to deliver you, right? Wenn man das auf diese Weise anschaut, dann markiert es den Punkt, wenn er es verkürzt, und er kommt jetzt, um dich zu befreien. Right, so let's look at some evidence for that. Schauen wir uns ein paar Beweise dafür an. Go to Matthew 25, Vers 31. Geht zu Matthäus 25 und Vers 31. What's Matthew 25 in relation to Matthew 24? Was ist Matthäus 25 in Bezug auf Matthäus 24? The same parable, das right? Das selbe Gleichnis. Okay, so Vers 31. Vers 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory. Now it's speaking here about the parable of the talents, right? Spricht das über das Gleichnis der Talente. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. Now, who does the separating? Wer macht die Trennung? Angels, right? Die Engel. Okay, now where do we read that? Wo haben wir das gelesen? Go to, just go down a few verses to Matthew 13. Geht ein paar Verse runter zu Matthäus 13. And verse 39. Vers 39. It says, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. So when they come to the end of the world, when the harvest is, when he puts in that first sickle, the reapers are the angels, right? Wenn man zum Ende der Welt kommt, wo die Ernte stattfindet, also die erste Sichel reingeworfen wird, da sind die Schnitter, sind die Engel. It's the angels that he sends to separate them, right? Das sind die Engel, die er sendet, um sie zu trennen. Right? Okay, go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Geht zu 1. Thessalonicher 4. And verse 16. Vers 16. It says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, 
and with the what? The trump of God. And this is speaking about his second coming, right? Okay, so at his second coming, it says that he has a silver trumpet when he's on the cloud and he blows it and says, Awake, awake, awake. Right? So when you go back to Matthew 4, 24 verse 31 it says he shall send his angels that's the harvest with the great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect right he separates these two classes right? okay so go to Revelation 14 these are all these points that we've looked at over these many months, right? Das sind all die Punkte, die wir jetzt über die vielen Monate angeschaut haben. Vers 14. Vers 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man. This is the sign of the Son of Man, right? Das ist das Zeichen des Menschensohns. Having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud. So this is when he's cast down the censer, right? Das ist, wenn er jetzt das so he cast down the censer and he uh, comes out and says, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. When's the harvest? Also er wirft das Räuchergefäß runter und kommt raus und dann sagt er das hier und wann ist die Ernte? The end of the world, right? Das Ende der Welt. The end of the world is the destruction of Jerusalem. Das Ende der Welt ist die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Okay. This is him putting in the sickle, right? Da wirft er die Sichel rein. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in a sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. We, we see that now. Können wir das sehen? Do we see, do we see that in relation to Matthew 24? Können wir das sehen in Bezug auf Matthäus 24? Just let's read verses 29 through to 31. Lesen wir nochmal die Verse Matthäus 24, Vers 29 bis 31. So immediately after the tribulation of those days, this is when he pulls you out the fiery furnace and delivers you, right? Sofort nach der Trübsal jener Tage ist, wenn er jetzt dich aus dem Feuerofen rausreißt und dich befreit. Immediately after the tribulation of these days shall the sun be dark and the moon shall not give a light and the stars shall fall from heaven. This is when he executes judgment upon Jerusalem. Right? Right? Verse 30. Vers 30. Then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together as a light from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. It's the deliverance, right? Das ist die Befreiung. Okay, and he separates those two classes. Der right? trennt jetzt diese beiden Klassen. Okay. So is this in relation to Second Thessalonians? Uh, well, Second Thessalonians would be the the next Sickle that goes in, right? Also, is that in Bezug auf 2. Thessalonicher war die Frage, was so, ich da just, go, just go to Revelation 14. Und das wäre dann die zweite Sicherung. Gehen wir jetzt zu Offenbarung 14, diesen Punkt zu antworten. So, let's go to, we just read verses 14 um, through to 16. Wir haben gerade hier Verse 14 bis 16 gelesen. Right. It says, and another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. So it's another sickle is going to go in there, right? Es wird eine weitere Sichel reingehen. And another angel came out of the altar which had power over fire and cried with a loud cry to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for our grapes are fully ripe. And the angel thrust in a sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. This is a now punishing Babylon, right? Das ist, wenn er jetzt Babylon right? That's Second Thessalonians. Das ist Zweiter Thessalonicher. Right? So just go to 
we, this is Joel chapter 3, right? This is Joel 3, right? Remember, right? Der Puts Joel. in the sickle, punishes the heathen. Er wirft right? die Sicher rein, bestraft die Heiden. So go, go back to 2 Thessalonians. Gehen wir zurück zu 2. Thessalonicher. Verse eight. Verse eight. It says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. When's he going to be revealed? When he sits in that temple, showing himself that, that he is God, right? Okay, this is in relation to the... Um, Destruction of Jerusalem, right? Das ist in Bezug auf die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. So he's going to take Jerusalem, he's going to sit in there, right? Wenn er Jerusalem einnehmen wird, dann wird er auch da sitzen. Okay, but it's for us, the, the I mean, they're going to come and do that, right? And then um, it's marking all these these people that are going to murder right there, right? Also für uns wird das dann markieren, wenn sie... Um, sorry, when they will destroy Jerusalem, you said. Yeah, when they when they come, when he sits in that temple, he they they're going to murder, right? Many people. That's what it's told. The destruction of Jerusalem is when he's going to murder um, all these people um, who have not got a connection with the Lord, right? Also, um, when er in diesem Tempel sitzt, dann ist es auch die Zeit, wo er dann all diese Leute ermorden wird, die keine Verbindung mit dem Herrn haben, das ist die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. Okay, as soon as he does that, this is when the Lord uh, will deliver his people. Right? Sobald er das tut, wird der Herr auch sein Volk befreien. Okay, because it says, verse 8, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Right? What, what, were they, what did they have? Was haben Sie power, gemacht? signs and lying wonders. Kraft, right? Zeichen und lügenhafte Wunder. Because they, de they deceive even the very elect, if it were possible. How do they deceive? Wie verführen Sie? Revelation 13. In Offenbarung 13. bring fire down from heaven, right? Bring fire from heaven. It's this marvelous working of Satan, right? These false miracles, right? Das wunderhafte Wirken Satans, diese falschen Wunder. Okay. Matthew 7. Many shall say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done, have we not cast out devils, have we not, not done very uh, many wonderful works in thy sight, right? In Matthew 7 sagen sie, Herr, Herr, haben wir nicht um, um, Dämonen ausgetrieben und all diese wunderbaren Werke vor dir getan. So when he delivers, it's the time when he's going to destroy them, right? Also wenn er befreit, dann ist auch die Zeit, wenn er sie zerstört. Right? Um, is verse 1 not the first circle? Sorry? Is verse 1 not talking about the first Yes, but are you not mixing the two up? The, the both the destruction of Jerusalem is typifying the second coming of Christ, is it not? Okay, so is but is Paul not speaking about the actual coming of Christ when he punishes Babylon? Also, diese Zerstörung schadet ja dann eigentlich. Seine, wenn er wiederkommt, also das richtige Wiederkommt, wo er Babylon bestraft. Das ist aus dem Chapter 1. Speaks about when he is revealed and takes the vengeance of him. Yes, but the, uh, okay, that's fine. But the point I'm trying to get is the false king of the north is typifying the true king of the north, right? Also, der falsche König des Nordens schattet den wahren König des Nordens. Okay, so the false king of the north destroys Jerusalem. Christ then punishes Babylon, but it's both of them are typifying 
the literal second coming here. Right? Dieser falsche König des Nordens bestraft Jerusalem und dann bestraft Christus den König von Babylon, aber beides schattet dann seine äh, buchstäbliche Wiederkunft voraus. Not one stone shall be left upon another. Speaking about this counterfeit Jerusalem that this Pope is going to sit in here, right at the end, right? Kein Stein wird auf dem anderen gelassen und er spricht aber dann über dieses gefälschte Jerusalem, wo der Papst äh, drin sitzen wird. You're, you're, not, you're not looking at these things line upon line. The, the false king of the north is, is Rome, right? But it typifies Christ. Also der falsche König des Nordens ist Rom, aber er schattet Christus voraus. But when the, the false king of the north is not punishing himself, right? Und der falsche König des Nordens bestraft nicht sich selbst. Okay, so it's typifying this work, but that's why Christ immediately goes and punishes Babylon. That's marking the point when Christ will come. And it's it been first illustrated here. Und er schattet dann eben dieses Werk voraus, wenn Christus jetzt kommt und also den falschen König des Nordens bestraft und das wird hier vorausgeschattet. That's why 1260 brings you to the time of the end when he, he punishes the man of sin. Deadly wound, right? That's the second sickle. Uh, whereas uh, Luke 21 is speaking about the destruction of Jerusalem by the false king of the north. Wohingegen Lukas 21 über die Zerstörung von Jerusalem durch den falschen König des Nordens spricht. So it it they, they both in in a perfect prophetic sense they both parallel each other right in vollkommen prophetischen sinne sind sie beide zueinander parallel but one is done by christ the true king of the north the other one is done by the false king of the north das eine wird durch christus den wahren könig des nordens getan das andere durch den falschen könig des and they both typify here when christ shall literally come right beides schattet dann voraus wenn christus buchstäblich kommen wird and punishes both Jerusalem and Babylon because Jerusalem then is Babylon, right? Und da bestraft er sowohl Jerusalem als auch Babylon, weil Jerusalem dort ist dann Babylon. We still haven't got this point, right? Ja, aber nicht den Punkt verstanden. The destruction of Jerusalem and the destruction of Babylon are two separate events that follow one another in the Sunday law. Die Zerstörung von Jerusalem und die Zerstörung von Babylon sind zwei getrennte Ereignisse, die aufeinander folgend sind im Sonntagsgesetz. This is this harvest, right? Das ist diese Ernte. Two harvests, one for Jerusalem, one for Babylon. Zwei Ernten, das eine für Jerusalem, das andere für Babylon. But they're, but they're both pointing forward to when the second coming of Christ here. Aber beides weist vorwärts auf die Wiederkunft Christi. That's why Matthew 24 is bringing us down to this point and saying this is the second coming because it's Right? 9-11, did it typify the second coming? 11. September hat das die Wiederkunft vorausgeschattet. Upon whom? Ja, auf wen? Babylon, right? Babylon. Right here at the end, right? Das ist hier am Ende. But it's not the destruction of Jerusalem. Aber das ist nicht die Zerstörung von Jerusalem. That happens directly before it, right? But it's also typifying the second coming, right? Okay, we've got to wrap our heads around these things, right? Okay, well, last point that we'll make. Um, just go down to Matthew 24, verse 36, and we'll just read this quote. Also geht hinunter zu Matthäus 24, Vers 36. Wir lesen dann noch ein Zitat und dann werden wir abschließen. It says, But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Right? So, does Christ not know when the time is? Weiß Christus nicht, wann die Zeit ist? Okay. Christ is God, right? Doch, weil Christus ist ja Gott. He knows the is the Alpha and Omega. He knows the end from the beginning, er right? Er ist das Alpha und Omega. Er kennt das Ende von Anfang an. Every single thing that he's laid out there in the Old Testament is telling us exactly when he's going to come, Jede right? Jede einzelne Sache, die er im Alten Testament ausgelegt hat, sagt uns genau, wann er kommen wird. So, you you can't understand that by just reading it. Uh, in the way that it's been read there, right? Kannst das also nicht verstehen, indem du das einfach hier so liest, wie das hier geschrieben steht. Because it totally contradicts the scriptures, right? Das widerspricht ja vollständig den. So the scriptures have to explain 
themselves, also right? Die Schriften müssen sich selbst erklären. Okay, so let's read this quote. Lesen wir jetzt dieses Zitat. And then we'll close on these thoughts. Dann werden wir mit diesen Gedanken abschließen. It says concerning the time of that coming, he says in Mark 13:32, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son but the father. So it says there that the son wouldn't know his own second coming, which he's prophesied about all down through the generations. Right? Er sagt hier, dass der Sohn ähm, nicht über seine Wiederkunft wissen würde, ähm, obwohl er das durch diese ganzen Generationen darüber prophezeit hat. And that would make him a created being, right? Das würde ihn zu einem geschaffenen Wesen machen. Right? Richtig. Okay. It says, It is thought by many that this passage proves that men are never to know the time. But if it proves this, It likewise proves that the Son of God himself is never to know the time. For the passage declares precisely the same concerning him. That it does not, that, that it does concerning angels and men. But can any person believe that our glorious Lord, to whom all power in heaven and earth is given, is and will remain ignorant of the time until the very moment that he comes to judge the world? No, it's impossible because he's God. Ja, das right? ist unmöglich, weil er Gott ist. And God knows all things before they come to pass. Gott right? weiß alle Dinge, bevor sie stattfinden. Okay. Um, it says, and if not, then certainly this text can never prove that men may not be made to understand the time. An old English version of the passage reads, but that day and hour no man maketh known. Neither the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. This is the correct reading according to some of the ablest critics of the age. Okay, but we're not to use the Hebrew, right? So the Bible must explain this point to us, right? Okay, it says, The word no is used here in the same sense as it is by Paul in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 2. Paul well understood many things besides Christ and him crucified, but he determined to make known nothing else among them. So in the passage first quoted, it is declared that none but God the Father maketh known the day and hour that is the definite time, the second coming of his Son. And is that true according to the Bible testimony? Is that true according to the Bible testimony? Yes, yeah, because the Father tells you the day and hour of his coming, right? So it's not the fact that no man's going to know, neither will Jesus know, neither will the angels know. It says that they're not going to make it known, right? Right. So, we We are, we are to understand the signs of the times. And this, this is, he's telling us right here the point, the very last thing that's going to happen. And you know now it's right at hand, right? Wir sollen ja die Zeichen der Zeit erkennen und er zeigt dir dann, wenn das eben geschieht, dass das dann eben nahe ist. Okay. So in the passage first quoted is declared that none but God the Father maketh known the day and hour that is the definite time of the second coming of his Son. And this necessarily implies that God makes the time known. The Old Testament contains the testimony of the Father concerning his Son and concerning the time of both his first and second comings. Therefore the time is to be understood See Daniel 12.10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. Right, in those verses in Daniel 12, it's all about understanding, Lord, when shall these things be? Right, that's what Daniel's asking. Diese Verse in Daniel 12 sind all die, also ist eben, wenn er... Weil Daniel fragt ja, wann werden diese Dinge sein? What does he say to him? Was sagt er zu ihm? Go thy way, Daniel, and shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end, right? Dein Weg, Daniel, verschließe diese Worte, versiegle sie bis zur Zeit des Endes. Okay, so you don't know the exact moment that's going to happen, but you know 
the signs that is going to bring you down to that point, right? Ich weiß nicht genau den Moment, wenn er kommen wird, aber du kennst dann die Zeichen, die dich zu diesem Punkt führen werden. It says here, the Old Testament contains the testimony of the Father concerning his son. That's what we were speaking about this morning, right? Das Alte Testament erhält das Zeugnis des Vaters über seinen Sohn, darüber haben wir heute Morgen gesprochen. And concerning the time of both his first and second comings, therefore the time is to be understood. See Daniel 12, 10. Many shall be purified, made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. It is by the teaching of his word, as we are led therein by the Holy Spirit, that we are to understand the time of the coming of the glorious King. Now, how is the Holy Spirit teaching us? Wie lehrt uns der Heilige Geist? Parables, right? Durch Gleichnisse. And if you understand one parable, you understand them all, Wenn right? Wenn du ein Gleichnis verstehst, verstehst du sie alle. So if you want to understand the events and how it's going to come to pass and what's going to happen there, you just bring them all together, also right? Wenn du die Ereignisse verstehen willst, willst und was eben dort stattfinden wird, dann musst du sie alle zusammenbringen. As further proof of this, see Daniel 9.25. It says, Know therefore and understand. Right? Know and understand. Und that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled right so the so god's people are understanding the signs of the times also right Gottes Volk verstehen die Zeichen der Zeit. they're understanding the events that lead down to the close of probation Sie verstehen die Ereignisse, die hinführen zum Ende der they will understand when they're in the judgment of the living Sie werden verstehen, wann Sie im Gericht der Lebendigen sind. and they'll understand that christ's coming is imminent Sie right verstehen dann, dass Christi Wiederkunft kurz davor ist. Okay, it says, um, For the day shall come upon thee, that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, and shall compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave thee one stone upon another, because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. So who gets destroyed? Wer wird zerstört? Those that don't understand the parables. Diejenigen, die nicht die Gleichnisse verstehen. Those that are not studying line upon line. Diejenigen, die nicht Linie auf Linie studieren. Those that don't believe those things. Diejenigen, die nicht diese Dinge glauben. Right? Because they got evil hearts of unbelief. Weil sie böse Herzen des Unglaubens haben. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Now, what's this speaking about? Are you sure, Maris? Yes. Okay, then, then say it like you're sure, right? Yes, it's speaking about this time when you're going to get delivered up. That's the sufferings of Christ, right? It's where they're going to treat you like they tra treated him, right? They're going to accuse you falsely. They're going to deliver you up. They're going to persecute you, right? But what follows it? Was folgt dem aber? The glory. Die Where do we see that? Wo können wir das sehen? In the temple on the mount, right? Im Tempel Ezekiel 40 to 43. Auf dem right? Berg in Hesekiel 40 bis 43. It says, um, He hath appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. God shall judge the righteous and the wicked. That's these two classes, right? Das sind diese zwei Klassen. That he separates right at the end. Die, uh, Genau, am Ende for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth 
both time and judgment. So what do the wise do? Was tun die Weisen? They understand time and judgment. Sie verstehen right? die Zeit und das Gericht. I hearkened and heard, but they spoke not aright. No man repenteth him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Every one turned to, to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. So this is what the unrighteous will do. They will not repent and say, they will justify themselves, right? Die Ungerechten, die werden nicht Buße tun und werden sich selbst rechtfertigen. Yet the stork in the heaven knoweth her appointed times, and the turtle and crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. They don't know the time of their visitation. How do ye see we are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it, the pen of the scribes is in vain. The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? The days of visitation are come, the days of recompense are come. Israel shall know it. The prophet is a fool, the spiritual man is mad. And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep. What time is it? Welche Zeit ist es? It's time for us to awake out of sleep, es right? Es Zeit für uns aus dem Schlaf aufzuwachen. If we understand and really believe the signs of the times, right? Wenn wir die Zeichen der Zeit verstehen und wirklich glauben. Right? Richtig. Otherwise we won't. We won't pay any heed to it and when we will justify our actions, right? Sonst werden wir das nicht tun. Wir werden nicht darauf achten und unsere Handlungen rechtfertigen. We will be the Pharisee. Wir right? werden der Pharisäer sein. Everybody see this point, so how they're all coming together, right? Jeder diese Punkte sehen, wie sie alle zusammenkommen. Right? Okay. So and the, the very, we're not going to read through it all, but the last thought is the days of Noah. There's two classes, right? Der letzte Gedanke ist, das werden wir jetzt nicht lesen, aber in den Tagen Noahs gibt es eben diese zwei Klassen. Noah's just speaking about the closed door, when the ark shut, right? Und Noah spricht über die geschlossene Tür, als die Tür der Arche sich äh, verschlossen hat. Okay, because it just says there was two in the field, two women grinding at the mill. It's always about these two classes, right? Das steht dann, es sind zwei im Feld oder zwei äh, Frauen, die äh, malen und das spricht immer über die zwei Klassen. Amen. Okay, let's close then with prayer. Lass uns dann mit Gebet abschließen. Father, I thank you um, for this understanding of your word that you're giving us. Lieber Vater, ich danke dir für das Verständnis deines Wortes, was du uns gibst. Dass wir sicher sein können, dass du uns in alle Wahrheit führst. Help us only to take heed to these words and believe them. Hilf uns nur acht zu haben auf diese Worte und sie zu glauben. That we would know the time of our visitation. Dass wir die Zeit unserer Heimsuchung erkennen können. And that we would study more in your word, that ja. we don't get deceived. Und dass wir mehr in deinem Wort studieren mögen, damit wir nicht verführt werden. Ich danke dir für diese klaren Darstellungen. And help us to lay them all in our hearts. Und bitte hilf uns, sie alle in unser Herz zu legen. Und hilf uns, dass alle unsere um, ja, nichtigen und törichten Gedanken uh, herausgenommen werden können. And we want to thank you that you Plan of salvation is perfect and that you want us uh, to lead us to this mystery of godliness. Und danke, dass dein Erlösungsplan vollkommen ist und dass du uns zu diesem Geheimnis der Gottseligkeit führen möchtest. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.